I just flew back to Texas last night, the first time ever being there. Got to go to a botanical garden yesterday and see some of God's wonders. It was pretty amazing. And he's so good. Safe travel. Appreciate that. Praise the Lord for that. Thanks for Sarah for being here tonight. And, uh, Start on that. So what are some of God's promises? And not all of you that believe me want to say be and if I go again, I'll come again and receive it to myself. Those are two that I always get when I ask this question. So I want others other than those two. Is it the sin of the devil is out? Voice of the archangel of the of God. Yeah. I'm gonna give you a little time to think it through. Promise of the Spirit to those that believe. Ephesians, there's the promise uh, for those that honor their father and mother, right? Long life. It's first commandment of the promise that's attached to it. What else? There's a lot of promises to the unsaved, aren't there? And there's some pretty serious consequences there for those who don't believe what's promised to them. The promises we stand on are different as believers. Anybody else have one? There are hundreds of promises in the Bible, right? My people which are called by my name. There's that one. Sarah had a good one. What was the one you mentioned? It was Isaiah 40, 31. It happens for those that wait upon the Lord. That's it. So use that. No, I can't often. So here we go. Standing on the promises. You can think about this as we sing. And I think it, again, it's 445 in the Majesty book. I believe if you want to sing along, but bear in mind that Sarah's going to be playing some instrumental stuff in the middle of the song. <laughs> Thank you. 
But there's so much uh, to living by faith that God filled the pages of the Bible with people and things and happenings uh, that He done and, and, and that would, could only be done by faith. This goes over a few on this first page that uh, gives us reminders as you fill in the blanks. You know, there's 26 people he used in the honor roll of faith, but there's hundreds of people used in the Bible uh, that live by faith and would accomplish things through the faith of God. But And here on, on B in your introduction, it says that there are various stages of faith. This was in our first lesson, and it went from no faith. If you remember in Mark chapter 4, verse 10, uh, that it, uh, Jesus told them, uh, how can you have no faith, amen, when they ran to the, the bottom of the boat? Because it was uh, boisterous and he, uh, they thought it was going to drown. They, they thought they were going to drown. But yet Jesus told them to go to the other side. He went to the bottom of the boat to sleep. And they're talking. They had God in the boat with them. Just like we got God in our boat. Praise God. He's living with us. And, and we're going to the other side. It just ain't here yet. We just got to keep trusting Him. But it says, and, and the first one's uh, uh, no faith. But the second one, He told them in Matthew, same story. But then Matthew recorded as He says, you have little faith. You have little, tiny bit of faith. You believe I can help you, but, but man, you're running down here scared you're going to die. Do, do you not care, Lord? Do you not care? Remember, I'm asking him that. And God cares. And faith, and it, it is to a wavering faith, as he says in Hebrews 10, 25, and also in James 1, 26. And you can't have a wavering faith because God's not going to your prayers. And so this is it. We want to have a faith that's strong. So your next faith is your strong faith. And Romans chapter 4, I just want to read a little bit there. And I'm not going to read all the scriptures I got down here. Uh, to, tonight I wrote a bunch of them now as I was studying this. But and I'm going to go to this one. I think it, it helps us. Romans chapter 4 and verse 20. I got so many pieces of paper on my little call it out. And in Romans chapter 4 and verse 20, it says this, that he, he staggered not at, at the promise. This, this is talking about Abraham, but of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe, do you believe it, that God promised us some things? And I know some people have some blanks there. And sometimes we need to write down the promises of God. Amen. That might be a homework assignment because there's a pile of them. You know, I was running them through my mind. But I know this, that God's promised us many things. Amen. And I really, one of my favorite promises is I'm going to see him as he is. Amen. And that I'm going to get a glorified body just like you understand? I, I think it's a gigantic promise that we're going to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. I don't understand why, but it's going to happen. Do you believe that tonight? And so listen, and then it goes from that and to a wavering faith. This is a strong faith, and then it goes from a strong faith to an unfeigned faith, uh, which is genuine. It means it's a genuine faith. And so this, we need to have a genuine faith. You know, it's, kind of, it's in 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy 1 5. Both of them talk about an unfeigned faith. It's genuine. It's a genuine faith that you really believe in Jesus. And some people have this kind of faith that's maybe there, uh, but it's not 100% sure. And so, you know, sometimes there's a lot of people that have been in church for 25, 30 years and they finally get it. Amen. And that's good. Amen. It is. It's good. At least they were there. They were, they were hanging around the right people all them years. And then they finally get saved. And then God starts using them. Amen. And, but, and then we go to the last one is a great faith. And it's not really the last one, but it's the last blank to fill in there. That we have a great faith. And so you remember that when the centurion, his, his child was a, a dumb child, and he had been cast into the river when he brings him, or he goes to Jesus and says, just say the word, Lord. He said, there's no greater faith in this in all of Israel. You know, and it says, centurion, so Roman that has that much faith. You know how the guy was preaching yesterday, and Carter did some studying. I'm going to get that uh, that message because it was, it was pretty magnificent. This guy was studying the word for a long time. But he said, you know, it's recorded in history that uh, when Jesus came back, and, and then he was said that there was not one soldier that was in Rome that didn't believe he rose from the dead. That's recorded in the record in the Vatican. And so that's really where Rome's hiding under the Vatican right now. They never ceased to exist. Their power's still there. It's just in the Vatican. And so it's recorded. There's also recorded in the books in, in America that there was not one soldier that didn't believe him, that he didn't rise from the dead. Yes, isn't that wonderful? That's something good because it happened, amen. And then if you read on, it's, it goes on just like anything. Faith needs to grow. 
It can't sit still. You can't just have a little faith. And 2 Thessalonians 1 3, Paul, he tells that your faith groweth exceedingly. He's talking to them. And that your charity towards one another. When your faith becomes stronger, you know what you'll do more? Love, you'll love more. Uh, the more you believe God, the more you'll love others, the more you'll forgive people. Because you'll realize how much God forgave you. And so God forgives us, permits you. Man, remember that? Amen. He's got he got on God's mercy. Man, I started bawling. And I thought I was the only one cry. I was looking around and Nick and was stepping behind me, man. And he just started bawling, crying just with me. You know, the Spirit of God hit us both at the same time. Both of us had yelled out, glory to God at the same time because God's mercy is incredible. Amen. It's so good. But see, it says Sarah started off with very little faith. But in time through many failures and testing, times of testing, her faith finally grew to a point where she judged, she, she judged God's faithful. She's faithful enough to keep His promise, no matter how impossible that may look like. You know, we're looking at what's going on. And look, bro, God didn't promise America to stay here forever. God promised a blessing. He blessed America. I believe He heard our founding fathers. I think He promised to bless His children. And this is the thing God promised to bless those who bless thee. And so Israel is all about everything that's going on over there. To the Ishmaelites, to, uh, to, to the children, the Jews, and what's happening over there. That's all what's being fulfilled. We're just a, a side seat here, man. We're here. And we can't be here for this thing to happen over there. And so there's a lot happening in the world. But it don't mean it's over for America. Yeah, it could be. But it don't mean it is over because he still said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, you his people tonight, I'm preaching to the choir. If, we, if, every, if every child of God in America got on their face, God do something, and we, we'd see something happen from heaven, and maybe he would turn them around. Maybe he'd say to a body, what a miracle that would be, amen, if we saw that happen. And you know what? There's not one person on the earth too wicked to be saved. Hey, it doesn't matter what he's done. If he confesses it, God will forgive it. Hey, if he believes God, and if you do believe that tonight, amen, he can. But review. The definition of faith, 11, Hebrews 11, 1. Yeah, I told you to hold your finger there, and I didn't, amen. And Hebrews 11, 1. And we'll read this real quick, and we'll go through. But now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know what faith is? It is me believing what God said. Enough to obey Him. Amen? That we'd obey God. Do you know, obey Him and I? Now, we don't all always obey Him. And we all slip up at times. But for the most part, we're trusting Him. Everything, every work, everything we do is the right way is to follow Him. B, faith understands God's Word. And God gives us something through our belief. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And that's the faith we have to, to look forward to this book. And we are able to understand creation and consistency and the conclusion of everything. And so we can understand why this is happening in the world because evil's abounding. Just like he said in the last days, we're seeing the pestilence, we're seeing the wars, and we're seeing the earthquakes. I don't know, this is strange to me, and I'll tell you this right on the news. And when we were on vacation last time, the guy who was taking care of our farm, he didn't watch my cows, and they, them, and they were probably starving the first we got there, we got there because that, that, that roll of hay was gone. <laughs> I mean, it was gone. I've never seen them eat every bit of it. It was gone. And then, so I, that means he didn't let them in there until the next two weeks, and he'd make it out to that back part of the barn. He left a, a broken pipe out there and just blew open for two weeks. So we came home. This is strange, y'all. Listen to this. We have a nasty water personal. And we got to run through five or six different things to get into our house where you can take a bath and not turn everything orange, you know. And, it, and, it, and here's the thing. Our water's perfect now. He let that thing run out there for two weeks. I don't even have it running through salt. Our water is, is perfect now. It's not turning that one. Good. Have you ever heard of anything like that happening? I said, hey, man, praise the Lord on what you did. If you anointed my well or whatever, but it worked. Or if you forgot about it, everything happens for a reason. I mean, my electric bill's a little high. But you know what, praise God, I've got clean water. Well, you know, he called me yesterday. He says, man, you ain't going to believe this. He lives about three miles down the road from me. His, his, his system quit working. He said, I had to disconnect it. His water was just as bad as mine. You know what? He said, my water's perfect. I said, that's a little strange to me. I don't know what's going on underneath the ground down there, but I ain't never heard of it happening to one person, but two people within three miles of each other. Water just turns perfect. 
I never heard of it. And my uncle did that for 40 years. Worked on one of them. I heard of that. But anyway, that's not to get to you. Listen, now we see, something to think about. Faith, faith, uh, believe Christ is God's substitute. See, we're rewarded with salvation by believing. And in Hebrews 11, 4, it says this, by faith they offered to, unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, but which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it that he being dead yet speaking. And it's his faith that kept him alive. It says, the, it says in here, if we, if we're not going to go to none of them stories because we don't have time tonight, but the faith we have in Christ that pays our sin debt and changes our life forever and ever and ever. Just because you believe it. That's it. You didn't have to work for it. You just had to believe. Amen? Do you believe it tonight? I believe it. But I believe it all my heart. And indeed, it says this faith walks with God like he had been. And God translated him. Let me tell you something. Tonight, we're supposed to be walking with God because we're going to get translated. That was my thing. It happened. It's going to happen, man. It ain't happened yet, but it's going to happen. He's going to descend from heaven with a shout. And he's going to be right up in the clouds. He's not going to make it right down here at that time. And we're going to get called out. Do you believe that tonight? Hey, listen. I believe when we fall down, God picks us up. We're supposed to walk with him. He helps his children. Hey, if you walk up by yourself, you might find yourself on the ground. It might take you a little longer to get up. And when you're walking with God, we still fall down. We still trip over things. There's still things affect us in this life. There's nobody perfect. Johnny Pope's not perfect. Hey, Mickey Carter's not perfect. Praise God, he can preach, man. But he's not perfect. We're all messed up. We all got issues. We all fall down when God picks his children up. Amen. And I shake this off and points us towards the straight gate again. And so we walk with God. E, faith seeks to please God. Put that in there. Seeks to please God. And so faith seeks to please God. 11.6 11, 11, says, but without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Hey, we've been going through this with our kids. I go over it for a while, amen? And sort of stick in their brain. But you can't please God unless you believe Him. you got to believe Him first. And then it, it says, for He that cometh to God. Amen. We've got to come to Him. And, and America needs to come to God more than ever. He that cometh to God must believe that He is and that His reward of Him that diligently seeks Him. A faith seeks to please God. F. Faith that works like Noah's did. Hey, Noah, being warned of God, things not seen yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to save his house. We're supposed to be working, amen. We're supposed to be trying to lead. We're supposed to be pointing our children towards God. And it's something that we do, and we don't quit doing until we die, amen. And Noah lived, he lived a long time, and he worked on that boat a long time. And you think all that God accomplished through that one man just because he believed God. A faith that works. Gee, Abraham taught us that faith obeys God. And so it is obeys. And that, and that last, uh, and G's uh, blank there. And so as we think about that, and by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out to a place which he should after receive the inheritance, he obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. And all he knew is God called him and he went. Amen. And so that's what we do with our life. There's a will for each one of us. It's never over. You're never, you're never too old. You know what? But Johnny Pope did. He did this to the told church. I might do this on Sunday because it was funny. Amen. He says, I want y'all to take a deep breath. Amen. And everybody did. And he said, all right, take another one. He goes, all right, let that one out. He says, now take the biggest one you can. He said, now if you can do that. God's not done with you yet. Amen? Listen, it doesn't matter if you're laying in a bed. If you can't do nothing, you can pray. God's got a will for your life. And so, you know what? Most people don't live in God's will. And it's just a shame today because if America was walking in God's will, and we'd see something different happening today. But God knew what was going to happen. He can see the future. He knows what's going on. And we know that we've got to trust Him. On H, on your next page, this week, faith believes in the God of the impossible. And we're looking at possibilities that's going on in our country. I like what Mickey Carter said. It's not over yet. It ain't over until it's over. Amen? And, I, and all we know is at the end we win. So really it don't matter what happens. You just keep doing what God called you to do until He comes to get us. A Christian's faith is rewarded with ability. God gives us what we need to do His work. He's going to give you everything you need to do to do His work. We all think we can't do uh, such and such yet with 
God, all things are possible, and you promised. You know what he told his, his uh, disciples about the rich man? He said that, that it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of an evil than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And they thought, wow, how, how, how are we going to get in? You can't get a camel through the eye of an evil. He said, with, with man it's impossible, but with all God, all things are possible. I believe God could put the biggest well on the planet through the eye of an evil. If that's so desired, what he was going to do, amen? And so I believe God can do anything. God promised Abraham a very large family in Genesis 17, but not just to be a daddy, but the father of many nations. And so there's a lot had to come from him. And God promised to give Abraham all those children through through his 65-year-old wife named Sarah. And at that time, they, they kind of believed it. They gladly received the information. She was only 65, and, uh, but it was going to be 25 years before it happened. Amen? But they didn't know that. They had to wait. What did he say? Hey, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I believe God gives us strength when we wait on him. But in time, they will both learn to believe God's promise simply because God promised it. God promises lots of things, amen? I'm going to give a list of that out. It'll be a homework assignment, but i got a whole list at home. I broke down the promises before and something that maybe I ought to start preaching on, maybe encourage people. But thirdly, message having impossible faith like Sarah. In Genesis 17, we won't go there tonight, but we're just going to uh, go through this or we'll never get done. It says, and hey, Sarah was a great woman who was going to become greater. Her name at first was called Sarah. And so if you look that up, that's how it's pronounced. I looked it up three times. Sinner I, and which means noble and good. It was a noble person. She was a good woman. But then God changed her name to Sarah, which means princess. And, and, and princess means a leader. Amen? And so she's a princess, and it means that she's going to be a leader. And so Sarah did lead her son and did much to it, had much effect on his life. But Sarah will become a great example of faith to all women everywhere. Of course, if you go at this, we won't look at it now. But uh, And for all time in First Peter, it talks about Sarah uh, being faithful to her husband and how all the women of the church should be faithful to their husband. Even if their husband is messed up, then maybe you can win him back to Christ. But then she called her husband Lord. Now, my wife did that one time, but she didn't do it on purpose. Amen. Uh, she messed up and called me Lord. And it was not an accident right in front of people, too. I had witnesses. Amen. Uh, she called me Lord, but she didn't mean to do that. Uh, but you know what? I said, hey, if we had a baby. She was, she was, uh, how old was you when we had our first baby? You don't remember? She don't want to tell us her age. But then everybody can do the math. Amen. I'm sorry. And I said, she had Michael, she had him. And I thought, you know, you didn't give me no girl. She said, I'm not doing that again, amen. But what if God told you to do that again? Would you do it? Would you? Yeah. Amen. Well, I've been praying about it, amen. I'd like to have me a little girl. Listen, it must have been wonderful. Sarah was married to a man of great faith. So to have an Abraham who had great faith, to have a husband of great faith, is different than having a husband that don't have no faith. You know, when you have somebody that believes God, man, he, you know he's going to be true. And then that he can't mess up, but he believes God. He has fear of God. Most men really only love themselves. And they're hard to love. And when somebody only loves himself, it's hard to love a person like that. Abram was becoming a very great man financially. And he seemed to be becoming wealthier and richer every year as God blessed him. But he knew this. He, he wasn't doing anything wrong, and there's nothing wrong with being rich in this world, even for preachers. You, it's, there, there's nothing wrong with it, but he says to seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all the other stuff will be added on to you. And a preacher should have his face in his book and he ought to be on his knees. I didn't tell you all this the other day. I think I brought it up on Sunday when I was out there praying and, and, I, and I saw that cloud and it, it looked like somebody was praying with me and the cloud said it was a silhouette and it looked just like a Jew. It had a nose just like, I forgot to tell her that it looked like a Jew was on his knees like this. I ain't kidding you. It was just like this and, and looking up in the sky the same direction I was. I mean, it got me so excited when I was out there and it, it, it I don't know why I did, God did that but I believe he put it there for me to see. I think it was, he was just letting me know he sees me. You ain't out there by yourself because there's times you, you feel like you just pray to the grass. Amen. But he's there. He's listening. And he's excited me. And he got me excited at that time. But listen, seek you first the kingdom of God. Thirdly, but what mattered most to Abraham was his relationship with God and his family. Except he had no family except his wife at that time as Abram. 
And so, you know, there's a lot. He had Lot, he had, lot, he had another family, his immediate family. He didn't have any children. And so time went on, and then it was okay, but God had told Abraham that when he would have many children, and he believed him as the stars in the sky. I remember studying that. Fifthly, but from the time that Sarah was 65 years old, the, uh, for the next 25 years, Sarah struggled to believe God would keep his promise. There was things that happened in her life that kind of kept her, uh, the, you know, doubting. And just like sometimes, have you ever doubted? We all have. Sometimes we've doubted our faith, even. We've, we've doubted whether we're saved or not. And sixthly, the, the longer God took, the more impossible it seemed. And I think that we don't see a lot of miracles because of doubt. You remember the first generation of Israel when they came out of Egypt? They didn't get to go into the promised land because of what? Their, their unbelief. Because, because they just couldn't believe God, even through all the miracles and all uh, things. You know what? He, he got to say that the scientists had came up with a theory that when they crossed the Red Sea, uh, Mickey Carter did. Man, he was lit up yesterday. He's 86 years old. I didn't know he was that old. He just retired last year. But he said they, they're trying to tell people now it was only six inches deep. He said, man, that's a, that's a greater miracle than if it was 100 foot deep because he dropped the whole army of Egypt in six inches of water. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And they can't mess God up. Hey, hey, how could you do that? That's a greater miracle than them, than them splitting it wide open. Praise God. Listen, oh, that was good. Hey, listen, seven, just as God had asked Abram to believe God enough to obey him, also was challenging to Sarah to believe God enough to trust him. And that... Uh, he knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing in church. Just like Hebrew 11 one says, just because we don't see him doesn't mean that he isn't working. We might not be able to see what he's doing, but he's doing something. God not sitting around doing this. Hey, man, he, he's, he's behind the scenes. He's working things out. And he wants us to believe him. It says the faith is something some things hope for, and it's the evidence of things, evidence of things not seen. We can't see what he's doing. And there's a reason for that. But I believe he's working. We have to believe him, church. Just like he says in verse 6, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder who that diligently seek him. What we do today is seek him. Seek his face. And we keep calling on him. God's doing something. And God can turn things around. But his will is going to be done no matter what happens. We just keep seeking God. See, what was it God asked of Sarah. It says to be willing and available for a miracle. That's all he asked her for. Amen. You know, he's going to do something here. To be willing and trust God enough to go through all the following. Read these two. It said number two, to be willing to get pregnant at, at not at 65 years old, but then at 90 years old. It was at, it's, it's at 65. She was thinking, well, they, they did that back then. They'd have babies at 65. Not at 90. At 90, they said, hey, at that, that old age of people living to be five, six hundred years old was long gone by the time they were around. And so she's thinking, man, at this time of years, but are we willing to give birth at a very dangerous age of 90 years old? And then fourthly, to be willing to train up a child as a mother. Hard work, but put up with the you know, sleepless nights and homeschooling and teaching your kid and raising him up in the ways you go. My, my mom did, but you imagine doing that at 90 years old. Amen? And not only that, but she lived to be 127. You know, she had to live long enough to raise him up. And they, they nurtured their children for a longer time than we do today. And they're trying to get their kids up to the house at 16. Now they go off to college, 17 years old. No preacher that I talked to this morning said he he got his daughter in USF. She won a scholarship. I said, really, man? You went and dropped your daughter off at USF? And then I thought, man, this boy's going to be chasing her all over that place. And I wouldn't have left my daughter there for nothing. They get, I'd hire somebody to come over to the house to tutor my daughter so I dropped her off at USF. And, but you know what? Some people got to do what they think is best. But I'm thinking this, man. I'd send my daughter to a Christian school. You know, at least they'd be getting Christian training. But I know sometimes if you want to do something great, but man, what's going on today? I won't leave my kids nowhere. Especially my 18-year-old daughter. But listen, what was against Sarah? Hebrews 11.11. 11. Though faith also Sarah, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed that was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful and promised. Now she had some faith. 
And God was going to keep it. I mean, she laughed about it, but her things were against her as weakness. Physically incapable of doing what God asked her. Hey, she just didn't think it was possible to have the kid at nine years old. Just like my wife won't think it is that, uh, I better not say that again. So listen, and they, and she never had any children before. She didn't know it was like to have a child. B, she was too old to get pregnant. And so listen, she was, see, she was too old to be having a baby that would normally kill her, kill somebody at that age. D, so God would have to give her supernatural strength. Hey, some, some things only God can do. You know what? Only God can fix some things in our life. I, there's things in my life that only God can fix. And he fixed it. And he did some things in my life I can't tell you. And God's working today. He's the only one that can fix this nation. And if he decides to do it, he'll do it. And it'll be some miracle way. And just like I say, what if he saved our president? Amen. Well, he's not really our president, but the one who's pretending to be our president. Hey, hey, he, what if he saved him? What would happen then? Hey, you know what? He'd have to tell the truth. <laughs> well, wow. And hey, what would that do to the country? Amen. Hey, the truth will make you free. That's what the Bible says. How about if we got some truth tonight? Hey, praise the Lord. Could I get an amen on that one? Hey, listen. She was past age. God gave her the ability to conceive anyway. Hey, dangers of the childbirth. God brought her through it. Fourthly, time. Fear not being around as the child grew. She lived 37 more years to a ripe old age of 127 years old. It got good. Amen. And they said yeah. the Filipino girls, they, they live to be 100, 110 sometimes, man. But they look like they're 95, but by 70, she's going to change. But she'll be beautiful till she's 70, and then and she's going to change. <laughs> and then she's going to get it. And say, you're here. They got kids, man. That's just what I heard. Hey, listen. E, what was her source of strength? Hebrews 11, 12. Therefore, she sprang there even of one of him as a good, good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky multitude, and as the sand of the sea which is by the seashore innumerable. The promise of God. God promised her this, this promise. So what was her strength? The first one's God's word. God told her you're going to have children that are the grains of the sands of the sea. Look up in the sky. See all them stars. And it was more clear then than it is now. Hey. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The scripture gives there the promise but what the source of so much of her determination through all the waiting and then the pregnancy and finally the dangerous delivery. Secondly, the blank is her husband. What the source of strength God gave her her husband with faith. Amen. And that was her strength day. When you got a husband with faith, he, he's strong when he's so he believes in God, man. Things get rough. You gotta listen to him. Hopefully he's praying, amen. Talking to God. But had already set her by example in following the Lord. And thank God for godly examples. Hey, for a mom and, and a dad that are and a wife, this, this, the husband, wife, and, and even children that are following God. But F, what was the result? In Genesis 17, 19, number one, a baby boy named Isaac. Amen? Anybody could have wrote that one in. His name means laugh and rejoicing in her life. And that's what Isaac's name meant, was laugh and rejoicing. In her life. This is proof of the other side of the step of faith in Hebrews 12 12. And so let me read that one to you real quick. And you'll say, Well, how does that mean that? Well, it says this in Hebrews 12 2. I mean, looking on to Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and was set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And so what it is, is it should bring joy to you, man. And he's, he's alive. He's sitting up there. He's making intercessions for us. And so we, we got to really see Saul, the future ahead that God had already started, which usually looks, you know, deadly to some people, but, but, but comes out beautiful. If you look at Ecclesiastes 3.11, he says, he has made everything beautiful in his time. And so that means anything that we come across, and even America, even when we see what's happening to our country, somehow this is going to work together for good. It's going to come out beautiful because God made everything beautiful in His time. Everything's going to work out. And I'll just tell you this. I was talking to a preacher today. He's been teaching on Revelations on Sunday morning. I said, wow, man. He's, he's doing it on Sunday. He's going through. He's, uh, he's uh, about 31 messages already into it. I thought, that's wonderful. I was thinking about praying about doing that, starting at the beginning and going through it. Uh, you know, I don't know if people would actually grasp hold of that or not, but we'll pray about that. But God was honored. Sarah was not the real hero here. She did.
did great, but all the attention should be on the Lord God of heaven. That's what we got to be looking at. All of our, our attention should be on God's promise, just like the promise of the Redeemer it gives us in 12. It's like the promise of what they told him, Isaac. And look, it came from the lineage. And Johnny Pope went through that lineage, and he went through some of the people that God had to forgive going through that lineage. And he goes, man, it sounds like a great American family, man. I'm not going to go through it today, but hey, there's some messed up people in that lineage. But and he brought Christ out of that just for a reason. We're all messed up. That's what it is. And really, God's mercy. God's so merciful, church. Same with work or schoolwork or with accomplishments in life. And I'm moving along. I'm up. You all ain't no bigger than I am. I'll get you out here in a minute. Let me read this to you. I guess my... I didn't even see what time I started preaching. I feel like I've only been preaching like 10 minutes. And listen, it says in Psalms 100, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come on before Him, His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving and into the courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. And so God's giving us a blessing here. And they threw this psalm in here just to, just to bless us. But oh, how God could be honored by our lives if we just got in the habit of praising Him. You know, I've been trying to provoke that on Sunday mornings and get people to praise God before I preach. Man, if we praise Him, He inhabits praise. And we want people to praise the Lord. Amen. We want people to be lift, we want us to lift God up uh, before the preaching comes. He does, he does on a day-to-day -day basis. He God is, is for, for what He does on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, look, He's going to get the glory. So we might as well give it to Him. Amen? Because He's going to get it anyway. And thirdly, the nation of Israel had its beginning, a supernatural race of people that God would use in spite of their imperfections and to bring the Lamb of God, the Messiah, to the world through them. Israel becoming innumerable in the stars of the sky and sands of the sea. Sarah did not name a child and then claim it. It was promised and she simply believed the promise. As Romans 10 or Hebrews 10 23 says, let, let us hold fast to our profession of our faith without wavering, for, uh, for he is faithful that promise. And in Romans 4 20, we read that already. He staggered not at the promises. And so listen, and, and, and it is the same with salvation, just accept what God did and is doing. That's what you put in your body. Accept what God did already and what He's doing. A, and, it, and B, it is the same with everything in Christian life. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What struggles did Sarah have when leaving God? Well, if, if you go home and read these scriptures in Genesis, it'll help you with your knowledge. But the time, the time it was taken for God to fulfill His promise. Sometimes we don't like waiting on God. We want something right now. And you want God to tell you what He wants right now. And you want to see it right now. And it doesn't always work out like that. But God, God is doing His things. And He does have promises for us. And, and we're seeing a world in chaos today. It's coming apart. And we now we have to have faith. we got to believe God. we got to believe Him. The substance of things so poor and the evidence of things not seen. we got to believe Him tonight. Do you believe Him tonight? Say amen. amen. And the fact that her faith was not as strong as her husband's. You know, some are weaker than us. Hey, when people are weaker than us in this life, we've got to pull them through of what they're going through. Some people don't have any faith. And some people are maybe looking to those with faith. I had three people Monday morning come up to me and ask me questions that are lost about what's going on in the world when I thought about it. You know what they need is Jesus. He's the only foundation that you have to stand on. One guy I preached to him for 45 minutes. He listened to me. I hope he didn't stay to hope he can receive Jesus and I find out. Uh, you know, this week that he got saved, that would be wonderful. And maybe he'll lower the prices on his wood at the soul and go over there, amen, because he's just as busy as low as it is. But number three, hey, that God could still fulfill his promise no matter what she did that was against it. What did Sarah do that hindered God promises? She doubted a lot. Let me tell you, God's not going to not fulfill the promises to us because we doubt Him or because we have struggles with our faith. But if this is, you believe God, He has promises for those who are His children. And so it doesn't mean God's not going to perform them. 
And so we just believe God. Just stay with him. She got impatient. She acted without God by the side of the Hagar. And, and of course, in Genesis 16, talks about that. And we came out with Ishmael. The Bible says there'll be wild men. And men, they're crazy. But we're still trying to clean up the mess from Hagar. And what they did there, it's a mess, man. Look at what's going on now. Now they're flying them over here uh, to do whatever. Uh, people are wondering what's going to happen with that. I don't know what's happening to the people that they left over there. I prayed for them this morning with tears. I don't even know who's left or how many are left over there. What they're doing to the Christians in that country. How could we be messed up to take them out? How anybody can listen to anything they say anymore. But listen, she got angry at her husband instead of herself and blamed him for it. And you read the scriptures, that's what she did, amen? And it's always a finger pointing thing. But fourthly, none of the above helped her receive the promise. Sarah was going to have to just simply believe God enough to trust him. That he would keep his promise no matter how impossible and no matter how long it took. You know, sometimes we see this thing and what is God going to do? And what's going on in the world? I believe God's going to keep his promises. I believe just like he said, he's never going to leave me nor forsake me. I believe that God's not going to, I'm not appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation from my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so as we quickly look at the conclusion, there was a lot against Sarah. But if God be for us, who can be against us? We think about that. There's a lot going on against us in this country right now, against Christians, against believers. You know what's happening. We've got a governor that's protecting us. I hope he stays in there. Amen. I don't know how he couldn't unless they cheat again. A Sarah's source of faith was enough. The word of God and the confidence of her husband. And sometimes our faith, like I said, carries someone else. What was the result? The ability to do whatever God needed her to do through it. And Sarah simply believed that what God promised, your little blank there, he was able to perform. And then he is. It is the same with salvation. Just accept what God already did and is doing. That's, the, that's your answer in that step blank there. We just got to believe him. He, what, and what impossible situation does God have for you? You'll follow his word, follow her example. You think in your life, what impossible situation? Faith accomplishes the impossible. Sarah was rewarded with ability. God gave her the ability at 90 years old to wear a job and, and raise him up, amen, the way he should go. Sarah did not tell God to give her a child. She just accepted what God offered to her, no matter how impossible it would be. Same with forgiveness and eternal life. His mercy endures forever, church. That's pretty much what I wrote at the end of that eternal life. His mercy endureth forever. So review questions real quickly. Sarah's name first was what? Sarah. Sarah, that's right. Sarah was married to a man who had great faith. What was his name at first? Abraham. Right. What was it? What and what was it God asked of Sarah? To be willing. My phone thought I said Siri. Did <laughs> you hear that? But, and then uh, to be willing and available for a miracle. That's your that's your answer. What what was against Sarah? Age, physical, beauty. And doubting. And weakness. What was her source of strength? Do you remember those two answers? What was it? Her husband and God's word. Or vice versa. What did God give Sarah when she just decided to trust God to keep his promise? Her son Isaac came in at the age of 90. That's unbelievable. Some people still don't believe. How hard did Sarah find to trust God? Now this is a hard one because I think she found it very hard at times. She found it hard to believe that man, I'm going to have a baby at 90 years old. Come on. So time was against it. She, she was impatient. I thought about it. She doubted. And she had a wavering faith at times. But her husband helped her, I believe, through all of this, just to keep looking at God. Because, you know, he was old too. He was thinking, golly, we're going to have a kid this age. But he did. And bonus question, this is your homework. What possible situation does God have for you that you got to trust in? You, you go home and do that one more day. You write down what what possible. This is for yourself, amen. You don't have to come here and tell us that. But what possible situation does God have for you? You know what God's given to us, church? I appreciate y'all being patient tonight. He's, he's, he's just so good. I believe that these promises we got to count on, amen. we got to count on God for this time. And we're living in some crazy times. We need to pray. 
Now you pray for these two as they go to get on. Y'all gonna get on a plane first, ain't you? Then you're gonna rent a car and you're gonna trust him driving through all them mountains out there. Is he a good driver? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hey, you know, I hope y'all have a good time. Let's just pray God will bless the church service Sunday and we'll be dismissed. Lord, we love you and thank you for your mercy.